Take a nice tall spine. Welcome yourself to yoga hour this morning, or if you're watching this back at a different time, your afternoon, your evening. I hope that this time on at your yoga mat allows us to let go a little bit and at the same time focus in. Focus first here on your breath, an easy inhale and an easy exhale. Although this month we are focusing in on witness, on noticing, it doesn't mean it's not without a path. I wore my Aim True tank top for that reminder today. It's totally good, I think. Great even have an aim and a goal in mind. That first taking a step back to witness and notice is knowing that it doesn't mean the goal comes today, tomorrow, or even when you plan to reach it, but it's still shining bright for us there. Nod your chin down here to the chest. Place both hands behind the head and ever so slightly nuzzle head up into the hands, finding a slight stretch from the top of the spine down to the tailbone. Draw the navel into the spine to find a strengthening on the front side of the body. Release the hands, lift the head, open the eyes, and adjust here to all fours. Come on over, place the hands under the shoulders, knees underneath the line of the hips, and do cat pose, just cat pose. Press down through hands and knees, round the back, drop your head. Stay here for a few breaths long enough to really notice what's happening. And then change to cow, drop the belly down, pull your chest through, eyes, tailbone, look higher towards the sky, just here. Good, and then start to notice the differences that come as you change between cat and cow. Use your breath to move through it here. Neutral spine, turn your hands around either 90 degrees or 180. Keep the hands themselves still as wide as the shoulders and lift your right leg up and back in line with the spine. So south paw tiger here. Like your leg is a tiger tail, swing it way over to the left, set it down, and look over your left shoulder. Lift the right leg back up and set it down. Lift your left leg high, flex the foot, point the toes down so as to square off hips. And then swing that tiger tail way over towards the right side, set the toes down. Look over your right shoulder. Bring it back, set the knee down, and turn your hands around. Change to plank. 
Walk your feet back, knees off of the ground, shoulders right over the line of the wrist. And then sway your heels way forward so that your shoulders actually move a little forward of the wrist. If that feels like too much pressure, try it with knees down. Still too much, don't do it. Go back to your regular plank alignment and then make that tiny uh, shift one more time. Shoulders just a little bit forward and then back to neutral. Lie flat down on the belly, cobra, peel up. You don't have to go super high, but try looking over one shoulder like you just did in Southpaw Tiger. And then turn across the center and look over the second shoulder. Turn back to the center and lower everything back down. Interlace your hands behind your back and lift everything up off of the mat in Shalabhasana, Locust Pose. Release, press back to Child's Pose. Walk your hands over towards the right side. Get that great side body stretch and reach. Walk the hands across the center and on over to the second side. And back into the middle. Pull your torso upright so you're sitting back on your heels in hero pose, virasana. Interlace the hands, flip the palms, push. Push through your thumb and your first finger. Lift, lift, lift. Release, downward facing dog, walk yourself. Forward in the hands and then stretch your legs up and back. Relax your head, give it a little bit of a shake, pedal out your feet. All month long we're working Within this yoga hour sequence three, there's absolutely some big gold type poses in the sequence. As they come up this week, maybe you mark it down in a way to think about the pieces of the puzzle and notice how they all flow in throughout the month. Let's lift the right leg up into the air, three-legged dog. Pull the knee to chest and hover forward. Step your right foot all the way through into a low lunge. And take your right hand up to the sky in a twisted or revolved lunge. One of those big goal poses for me is always revolve triangle, just like feeling good in it. It really starts here, find this revolved Low lunge, take it one more breath. And then lower the hand back down to the floor, step back to plank, down to the mat. Cobra, peel the chest up. Look over the shoulders again, nice and slow. This should not be quick. Across the center, over the second shoulder. And across the center, press back to child's pose. And this time a threaded child's pose. So right arm under the left, right shoulder, side of the face, ear towards the mat. You can be more forward and lifted in the hips or sit it lower and back. Unthread your right arm, give it a go on the second side, left arm threads through. So if this is a big ask in the shoulders, you could be kind of more back in the hips like I'm doing now in Virasana, but with a little thread. And then we'll unthread. 
And everyone, downward facing dog. Second side here, lift your left leg up, three-legged dog. Knee to chest, hover forward for just a moment. Using that low belly strength, step the left foot through into your low lunge. And revolved lunge or twisted lunge, left hand high. Notice the restriction, notice the freedom. Lower the left hand, step back again to plank. A little quicker now, lower down, pull through cobra, and right into downward facing dog. Look forward to your hands, step or jump to the front of the mat. Hang over ragdoll pose, hold the elbows or just let the hands drape. Relax head, neck, and shoulders. <sighs> let the breath be. And roll it up to standing. Shoulders up and back. Forward and down. Utkatasana, chair pose. Have feet together or a little bit apart. Bend the knees, sit into your thighs, extend your arms. With a twist, palms together, take your left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Go to your second side. Take the hands across the chest through the center and twist to the second side. Right elbow can lock down or hover. Always finding what works for you. That is the witness. Come back across your center. Exhale forward fold. We'll do the same thing from a lunge. Keep the right foot forward, step the left foot back. Hands come to the thighs and twist. Left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Untwist, fingertips down, step left foot forward, step right foot back. Hands to the thigh. Take a breath. Palms together and twist. Right elbow to the outside. Right? And that revolved lunge is still open to you if that's a better option. As we move along, everything should feel progressive, offering you what came before as a great alternative. Untwist, step forward again. Utkatasana, again, sit down into the thighs, extend the arms. Within that progression, you either stay there or add a bind, hands behind your back. Squeeze bent elbows towards each other and then try to straighten the arms. Head lower, arms higher. Make your forehead touch your upper knees towards your thighs. Release the bind if you're in it. Everybody stand up, arms to the sky. Exhale, swan dive down. Half lift. Back to plank. Plank from knees or toes, lower down to the mat. Cobra or up dog option. Everyone downward facing dog. Tree pose from side plank. We're going right for it. Balance on your right hand, the outer edge of your right foot. Step the left foot a little forward like a kickstand to give you the balance here in side plank. Either stay there or place your left foot onto your right leg in tree pose. It could be on your calf or on your thigh. 
Try to point the knee straight up to the sky. Go back to downward facing dog, two feet on the ground. And that same foot that was in tree pose, your left leg, step it forward into a low lunge. Spin your back heel down and open up to warrior two. So cartwheel the arms upright, chest, kind of ears, shoulders, hips, all open to the side, big with the chest. Turn your gaze over the front fingertips. Stay there for another two breaths. Really nice. Let's see the difference from warrior two to warrior one. Everybody take your hands to your hips. That back hand and hip, make it point more towards the front short edge of the mat. So maybe walk the feet in a little bit, the back foot in a little closer so that you have enough momentum to shift. Back hip, back hand, more towards the front. Keep the front knee bent, lift both arms back up to the sky. And there we are, warrior one. Lower your hands either side of the front foot. Step back to plank. Lower down, cobra, downward facing duck. The second side starts with the side plank. Left hand outer edge of the left foot. Side plank also available to us with bottom knee down or on the left forearm instead of the hand. Step your right foot forward for that kickstand, a little easier to find balance, and that nice bonus of a good IT band stretch. Stay with it there or try the tree pose, right foot against the left leg. It's a funny thing, it's a little scary to get to tree pose, but that's my aim, it's the goal, and I realize once I get there, Ah, it feels maybe even easier than keeping the feet stacked. Downward facing dog. And then bring the right foot all the way through into that lunge. Warrior two, spin the back heel down. Lift up to warrior two, shoulders right over the line of the hips. Everything turned broad, open to the long edge of your mat. I always enjoy how big this pose is, expansive. The warrior one, for me, much more controlled. Bring the hands to the hips, heel toe the back foot in a little bit so that you have some access to turn the back toes to face the front corner of the mat. In turn, move the hips, the shoulders together, and lift the arms back up to the sky. Lower the hands either side of the front foot. One more flow, step back, lower down. Baby cobra, bigger cobra, up dog, it's your choice. Downward facing dog, hips up and back. Look forward to your hands. And make your way forward, a step, a jump, a walk. Half lift, forward fold. Stand up, arms to the sky, palms together, center of the chest. We've got locust and warrior, like elevated locust and warrior three coming up. I'm going to step to the center of my mat. Feel free to do the same. I want you to keep the hands right here at your center and try to make your right knee touch your palms. 
Kick your right foot forward. Bend the knee again and kick the foot behind you. Hinge forward like a T shape in the body. And send your hands now back towards your right heel behind you. Imagine you're doing that belly down back bend lift, but you're elevated, you're levitating. Reach your arms forward now, and that changes us to warrior three. Bring palms back towards prayer position. Maybe say a little prayer to keep balanced as you stand up. Pull the right knee back as high as you can towards your hands. Eagle pose. Wrap the right leg over the left. Right arm under the left. If you're feeling fatigued in that left standing leg, I'm with you. And I know we can do this. Two more breaths. Both feet down to the mat, release the arms, stretch them up to the sky. Samastiti hi, big full reach. Good, palms come back to the center. Where's the breath? Breathe in, breathe out. All right, my goal is second side. Don't let that left foot come down. And then I'm going to notice if it really does need to come down, and I'll give myself that levity, that ease. Left knee high, shoot it forward. Bend the knee again, and then shoot the leg back to fold over. The pendulum comes head down towards the line of the hip. Leg up towards the line of the hip. Again, levitating or elevated locust, arms back. What makes that goal a little bit more easeful here is for me, keep the right knee bent. It doesn't have to go to a straight leg. Arms out in front now for warrior three. And then hands back to Anjali Mudra as you stand. Pull the left knee up. Uh, eagle pose. Wrap it over the right leg. Left arm under. Release the left leg, release the arms, reach it way up to the sky. Yeah, nicely done. Exhale, forward fold. Downward facing dog, walk the hands forward and your feet back. We're transitioning to face the long edge of the mat. So just step one foot forward and then come to walk your hands to the side. Face whichever way makes the most sense to you. But wide legged forward fold is what we're getting ourselves into here. Prasarda Padatanasana, head down towards the mat. Legs as straight as it works. Lift your toes, spread them wide, set them back down to the mat. If you're working straight legs, really do indeed pull up on the kneecaps and tone your quads. Lean your weight a little forward like you feel like you're going to head roll, tumble, somersault forward rather than back here to get that long line of stretch through the back of the legs safe and secure. All right, hands to the hips, press down through the feet, come all the way up. Turn your right foot out. Extend the arms, triangle pose, reach as far as you can to the right. Lower right hand to your leg or the floor, left arm up to the sky. 
For a moment, turn your gaze down to the bottom hand. Kind of noticing the line from your fingers, wrist, elbow, shoulder. And then keep tracing that line as you turn the head to look out to the side. Can you even look up? And I'm hoping we can keep tracing that same line on the top shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers. Next breath, inhale, come all the way upright and switch your feet. Turn your right toes now in a little, turn the left toes all the way up. And right here, if you kind of switch side to side, you should have one line, fingertips to fingertips. That's what we're trying to keep. Hinge to the left, left hand goes down at the same rate as the right arm goes up. So we're trying to keep from allowing the hips and shoulders to break that line. Keep it stacked. And come all the way up. Feet parallel to one another, wide-legged forward fold to give it a go a second time. Prasarda Padatanasana, head towards the mat. Hands about in the same line as your feet. These straddle positions are some of my favorite. They come pretty easily to me if you are Similar, hold on to your ankles with bent elbows. Your challenge allows you to pull down and in a little bit more using strength and stretch together. Look back towards the front of your mat as you crawl into a low lunge. Switch it all the way to downward facing dog. Pedal it out. Here's our look at revolved triangle. Lift your right leg up, three-legged dog. Step it all the way through. Remind yourself you've done all of these pieces. So let's start with revolved low lunge. Right hand up, left hand down. Looking for that similar opening that we just found in triangle pose. Look down at your right foot. Step your left foot in a little bit. It's almost like starter blocks for a race, yeah? Keep the bottom foot, bottom hand down. And can you make your legs straight? Send your left heel into the mat. Revolve again through the torso and try to look up at the top hand. I'm keeping left fingertips way over on the big toe side of the mat today for myself. Feel free to do the same. Walk yourself out of this slowly by looking down. Go back to bent knees like you're in that starter block. Walk the left foot back into your full revolved lunge and right hand down. Step back, downward facing dog. Second side, lift your left leg high, three-legged dog. Step it all the way through into low lunge. Remember, full stride first. Right hand way over on the right side of the mat so there's space, you're not crossing over in the most traditional sense of that twist today. Instead, we're taking left hand high and getting that full revolution of torso from shoulders to hips. Starting from that place, look down at your left foot. Step the right foot in about a foot so you're in that starting block. And then straighten both legs and the right heel as much as you can to the ground. It's probably going to throw off the line of hand to hand that we worked with in triangle pose. Once the legs are there and planted for you, return twist 
from hips to shoulder line to get the left hand higher. Back to your starter blocks. Walk the right foot back. Lower the left hand, this time plank pose. To your mat, cobra or up dog. Downward facing dog, very nicely done. Step your right foot forward again into low lunge. Drop the back knee down to the mat. Anjane Asana, lift both arms up to the sky, also called monkey lunge. Palms together, look high. Drive your right foot down and pull back isometrically. Draw the back knee down and pull forward isometrically to keep that strong muscular engagement in the lower body, allowing a little breathing room, lift and opening in the upper body. Lower the hands. Twisted monkey, both hands come to the inside of the foot, heel toe right foot out to the side, turn toe knee hip out. Pull the left heel in for the quad stretch. Keep going here, add the right hand to the right thigh, look over your right shoulder. Next bus stop, hold the back foot and make the heel and butt connect. Feel a little softening in that left thigh. Breathe here. And release the back foot. Come through plank, just plank, not the flow. Just hold plank, stabilize, stabilize. Downward facing dog, step the left foot forward to your low lunge, back knee down. So first Anjane Asana, like warrior one, everything is forward. Square the hips and shoulders. And as you release the hands, take the left hand to the inside, heel toe the left foot out, turn toe, knee, hip out. Step by step, add it or don't, heel to the back, uh, right heel to the right hip, left hand to the left thigh, look over your left shoulder. Great stopping point right there. Looking for a little bit more. Reach back, hold on to your foot, pull the heel closer to the hip. Often that's done by taking your hips closer to the heel. That's a little easier way to get that connection. Trying to keep the connection as much as possible, then soften a little down and forward. And slow release, plank pose. Make your way to plank pose. Knees, chest, and chin down. So eight point pose or eight angle pose. Take chest, chin, hands, knees, toes, that little curl and lift of the hips up. It's more like cow in the spine. Slip it into cobra. Lie flat down onto the belly and turn over onto your back. Face either way. But as you lie down onto your back, set the soles of your feet flat on your mat for bridge pose. In bridge pose, keep the back of your head and your shoulders 
down, let the curve of the neck stay up away from the mat. Everybody press down into your feet to lift your hips. Most doable hands by your side, hold the edges of the yoga mat or make bookends. Hands could also interlace underneath you and roll the shoulders in. Y'all are familiar with those options. We're going to building bridge pose. I inch my feet out, out, out to make the legs straighter. My legs don't go all the way straight, but they're going straighter. And try to keep the hips lifted as you do that. And then walk the feet back into regular bridge pose with that deeper bend of the knees and try lifting your hips any height that they last. Finally, lower the hips all the way back down. Hug your knees into your chest. We've got one more bridge pose here. You'll lift up and then Walk the feet over to the side, much like we do uh, walking our hands in child's pose, but it's the feet. Ready? Let's try. So it's bridge pose first, lift up, hands, any of the options that make it most easeful for you, because now we're adding in a second goal for the legs. Heel toe, heel toe, until both of your feet are all the way off your mat on the right side. And then heel toe, feet back onto the mat. And I really am just kind of slip sliding my feet from side to side, not picking them fully up. Go over to the second side. Ooh, I witnessed that's a whole lot different for me, a tighter twist. Good to know, back off as needed. Go back to the center and lower your hips. Hug the knees back in. Stretch out the spine in this way. Getting in a bit more core strength. Hands and feet straight up to the sky. Lift your head and shoulders off the mat so you're in a little crunch trying to touch your toes. Keep the right leg as is, scissor left leg down and lean a little bit towards the right side. The tricky part is always trying to keep our right ribs from lowering to the mat. Lift, hold, little static hold here. And then both legs come up. Drop the right leg, do the scissor of the legs first and then move the arms across. Whew. Work with your breath. Go back to the center a little quicker now, four times to the right, center, left, center, right, center, left, center. Give yourself a hug, well-deserved. Flip or spin back around to your belly. I'm going to give you two very opposing options here. The first is Sphinx pose, forearms down, lift the chest if you're looking for an easeful, more easeful back strengthening, good stretch here. More intense, you're gonna lie belly all the way down, face down, and lie down on your hands so arms are underneath you. And it's the legs. And then release, whether you're in sphinx or the legs up pose of inverted locust. Change to child's pose. A 
Lift your torso upright so you're sitting back on the heels like we did in the beginning of class. Take your right hand up and give yourself a pat on the back. Release the right hand, do it on the left side. That like aim true, have a goal for some of the big poses. This is that big pose I was talking about. A lot of the pieces of the puzzle we've fit together. I'd like you to focus and witness the pieces that are working for you today. Start here from a squat with your heels up. Take the hands to the inside and part the knees. And then go knees down to the mat. Yeah? This one gets all squishy and crazy. It's pigeon. I'm sorry, peacock pose. I wish it was pigeon. It's peacock pose, mayurasana. We're going to stick our elbows into our gut. It's hands together, bend the elbows, stick them into your gut. My microphone gets tricky there. Stick the elbows into the gut, and then the hands are in that south paw that we started with. Set them down between your knees. Cat pose, round the back, and try to set the forehead, forehead, down to your yoga mat. Yogis, if you are here, this is a huge goal and ask. Go back to that thinking of patting yourself on the back. One more tricky stage, feet back behind you like you're in plank pose, stabilizing top of plank, walk one or both feet back. Still good, like sphinx pose, lift your forehead up. Ooh. So good, the arms go straighter, like heels more forward and plank to try to get your feet off the ground. If that sounds crazy, can you lift one leg? Oh my God, can you lift the other one? Get out of there as safely as possible and turn the hands around. Look at y'all, trying it out, I love it. Stretch the downward facing dog. It'll get that big ask of south paw kind of out of the way, downward facing dog stretch there. Instead of a little folded in pose like we just did, let's make it a big pose next. Go back to your side plank, left hand, outer edge of the left foot. Stack the feet, right arm up to the sky. Do you want to do tree pose like you did before here? If you're done balancing on your hands, stand up here and do tree pose. You can stretch the right leg all the way up. Hold on to it or don't. And then second side, if you're standing, second side in tree pose. If you're coming from side plank, right hand outer edge of the right foot. Left leg, maybe tree pose, maybe flying. Everyone, make your way to join in a standing forward fold at the front end of your mat. Uttanasana, standing forward fold, front end of the mat. Make all ten fingers touch the ground. Make your legs as straight as they'll go from there. And then all of us hands to the waist, point your elbows up to the sky, press down into the feet and come up. Whew. 
Let's keep going a little bit more. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Half lift. Step back to plank. Lower flat down to the mat. Cobra, so just good old sun salutation here. Go to downward facing dog and hold it there. Pigeon pose, this really is pigeon. Right knee to the right wrist, heel towards the left hip. Walk the back leg back. Upright pigeon pose, can you take the hands to either side of your body and keep the torso lifted? Gauge yourself, witness, notice. Do you need to be upright, down and forward or something more complicated? Pull the back heel in and add your quad stretch to this. So a little bit of uh, free play here from pigeon pose. How do you want to open to it? Make your way out of the first side and switch to your second side. Again, create the structure, the form first, left knee to left wrist, heel towards the right hip. Walk the hands out, feel lifted, and then kind of notice what does this side want, need. And use that to aim. Is it down and sleeping pigeon? Is it staying upright? Towards mermaid. Gradually, downward facing dog, make your way out of there. Pedal out the feet. Look towards your hands. So from downward facing dog, look towards your hands. I'm going to ask you one more big complicated pose. Walk your feet over towards the right side, kind of off the mat like you did from that bridge pose. Most of my weight is on the left hand, pretty free here on the right side for now. But then I'm going to change that by setting the knees onto my upper right arm bone and then most of the weight is on the right hand. Keep leaning your head more towards that left hand to center the weight and try to lift up your feet in side crow. Set them down and walk your feet back to downward facing dog. So this takes for me, at least, a whole lot of breathing, witnessing, noticing those change weight patterns. Walk the feet over towards the left to make it doable. So again, I notice as I walk my feet up, I've got all the weight on that right hand. It's not sustainable. It'll be too much. And so I'm going to set the knees onto the left hand. And then it's like, ooh, now left hand's getting it all. Literally, head, hips shift more towards the right side to make that a little bit more towards a 50-50 to get the feet off the ground. And then walk it back to dog pose, set the knees down, get the weight off 
lift your palms to face up to the sky or turn the palms to face up. Bring the hands now to wrap back towards the heels to let the shoulders round forward and down. Change to a seated position on your bum. Switch your feet around, soles of the feet. Get your heels as tight towards your hips as possible. That'll probably part the knees. Lean back to get the thighs back together. Take the hands behind you. Keep everything squeezed in towards the midline and lift your chest as much as possible. Like cow shape, look up. You'll probably need to look forward at the camera here for a moment or at your screen. From there, I want you to lift your left hand up into the air and cross hook. Elbow to the outside of the thigh. Think back to those opening twists that we did. Put your weight into the back hand to get your butt off of the floor. And then can you kind of maneuver around? I've got to get my heels off of the ground to make it happen. Line your hands on that long edge of the mat. I'm hooked way closer in. I've got my heels up on the mat. Heel my hands, I should say, on the mat, the fingers on the ground. So there's a little difference in height and that helps not put too much pressure on the wrist and then lean forward and see if the feet lift up, trying that side bakasana shape one more time. Set it all down, butt goes back down. Do the whole thing over on the second side. So if you went soles to the feet first, squeeze the knees in, walk the hands up, torso up, look towards the sky. Okay, I wanna keep as much of this shape as I can, knowing it needs to shift to get into the hand balance. Right arm up, elbow outside of the knee. This is 90% of the shape. It's a good place to stay and work. Shift the butt off of the ground. How are you gonna get your hands down to that long edge of the mat? For me, it means heels up because I've got a shorter Achilles heel. I know that needs to happen. Then place the hands. End of the practice, I'm gonna keep the heel of the hand on the mat, the fingers on the hardwood floor so that it's easier. And then tip, tip, tip. Let it all come down, sit down, lie down. Circle the wrist as you hug your knees into your chest. Circle the wrist the opposite way. Rock a little side to side. In terms of our live stream schedule, we started the movement four or five minutes after the hour. So I'm gonna give us four or five minutes here. I hope that still works for you. If not, give yourself at least five deep breaths here. All right. Stretch your legs out, everyone, like Shavasana, arms, legs by your side. 
take those five breaths here as still as possible, as released as possible to witness, to notice. I know one of my big goals where I was aiming was simply to feel warmth and connection through the practice today. Knowing that intention, is there any last bits that you need to do now? What was your intention? Does a little bit more wiggling, one more pose help you out? Please add it in. If you're feeling quite complete, stay in the stillness, whether it's lying back or seated. Slowly take your time to come back to a seated position if you're lying back. If I'm rushing you, of course, stay there as long as you wish. For those ready, bring palms together, thumbs to the sternum. Again, honoring your intention giving yourself so much gratitude for taking the space, carving the time for this movement practice. In an effort to send the goodness that we find here on the mat out into the rest of our day, we close in the sound of Om. One Om together today, empty out the breath. Take a deep breath in. Get a gratitude to yourself, each other, this practice. Thank you. Namaste.